morning and welcome to the Soho Society. My name is JP Levac. I am sat here with the wonderful Tim Lord. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Joel. Oh, JP. Yeah, well done. Um, now it's chucking it down with rain out there, but we're, um, we're well into April now. In fact, it's Easter tomorrow. It's a bank holiday coming up. It's a Thursday, the 6th of April. Uh, who have we got on the show, Tim? Uh, we have uh, Councillor HLS is our first guest. She is a deputy leader of the Westminster City Council and she is the lead on licensing and public protection. And she's talking to us about some women's safety issues. We're going we're gonna to call her later. Down the line, to use the old radio expression. And then live in the studio, we have Mark T. Goddard, who is also a musician. And so we're going to definitely start this show with some of his songs. Very modestly, he didn't choose one of his own songs, so I insisted. Yeah. Um, okay, now... We've got to hear all about these outfits that um, Legion of Many wore when we catch up with Mark. Um, but we will start with a bit of music. And this one is actually, I'm told, written about Soho. So that's handy, isn't it? Um, let's don't talk, don't think about tomorrow tonight. Welcome back to the Soho Society Hour. Um, and that was Legion of Many um, by Mark, who we'll be chatting to after our first guest. Welcome back to the Soho Society Hour. So I'm fading out the animals a little bit early, but the best person to introduce it is our live studio guest, Mark T. Goddard. Good morning, Hello. and thanks for coming. Now, that will tell us a little bit about the project, right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. I've uh, just written a book called Losing El Dorado, which is all about a trip I took across America 20 years ago with my brother in a Cadillac. But we've got an exhibition at the Karma Sanctum Soho of all the photographs from, from the book. But I was asked to come on Soho Radio and talk about the connection with Soho, which was a little bit um, daunting for me to begin with because... You're not allowed on without you, a connection. You're without a connection. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, the book's all about America. <laughs> but actually, it's not. It's actually really the book is about two British brothers, um, musical brothers, going, you know, going to America to discover, to get closer to the roots of the music they loved. And Soho is a place that my brother and I have always loved, but... Um, our, the terminus of our journey was New Orleans. Mm. Um, we, we we decided we would go, we'd start in Boston, try and find a car in Boston. This is 2002. So and 20 we would, years ago. 20 years yeah. ago. And we would we'd find a car and get to New Orleans. We thought we, we grew up playing jazz and blues and rock and roll. And, you know, New Orleans was always the place where that stuff comes from. But we thought we didn't, we wanted to, you know, taste the waters downstream before we went to the, the, the source. Um, and um, the House of the Rising Sun for me is a song. It's a song which, like, you learn to play. Everyone who everyone who plays the guitar probably learns the House of the Rising Sun. It's probably one of the first songs they learn. Right. Um, and it's an interesting song because it's 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 blues, but it's not a blues. It's it's in the blues idiom, but it's not a twelve bar blues. And that's an interesting thing. The other thing which is fascinating. So, the House of the Rising Sun, as everyone knows, is a bordello in. Um, New Orleans, um, and it's sung famously from the animal's perspective. They, you know, it's about the man who's being pulled back to the house of ill repute. Um, but the song itself is actually much older than the animals. The animals um, actually, they actually interestingly took it. They took that arrangement, which is in the minor key, from Dave Von Ronk, who was then covered by Bob Dylan. But before that, it was always in the major key. Right. And it had a very different sound, um, and it the 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 roots of it are sort of lost in time. But um, obviously, the sharecroppers and in, in the cotton fields would, would be singing this sort of stuff. But then also, it was also a folk song within um, the su Southern American states. But actually, interestingly, it seems that the song um, might have a lot of its roots in um, in Irish folk songs and also songs from. Um, from 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 England, and that the, actually there's a song called "The Unfortunate Rake," which is a song all about. Um, uh, it's all it's kind of it's an Irish folk song, which was was which was sung a lot in America, mm -hmm. and it might be referring to a bordello in Soho, London, um, which is where the connection comes in. Mm -hmm. um, and there actually are rising suns everywhere you go in the UK, um, and they tend to be inns. 
And inns obviously are places where people would stay overnight, so they're probably more likely to be a bordello, which is, you know. Are you just saying that there's a lot of there were a lot of there were? I mean, it, it, I've I read an amazing book years ago called City of Sin about how um, seven, about 17th and 18th century London, yeah. and uh, Soho was you know St James's Park as well and places like that. Busy. It, Busy, yeah, and there was also the pleasure gardens in Vauxhall and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, there's an interesting connection there, and obviously, it's the, the, the fascinating thing is that by putting it in the minor key, it makes it into a much more melancholic song than if it's yeah. in the major key. Yeah. But um, Mark, you're a proper musician. Yeah, yeah proper musician, play? and we also played some of Bach's music yeah, at so the top what, of this. I, played, I, I, I sing a bit, but I play the guitar primarily. But I'm also a trained pianist, so um, I grew up playing the piano. My, both my, my dad and my brother are, are boogie woogie piano players. So um, yeah, so yeah. The other thing you're known for is your outfits, particularly these. <laughs> yeah, so these are the many. We we had a we had an interesting electro glam look. We 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 wore a lot of feathers and um, spandex and leather. Um, and we basically we were really a Soho band. I mean, um, we played we we played in places like Madame Jojo's. We we oh. we were played at Soho House, obviously, but we we had this interesting. We are our, our ancestral home was always Soho, and we always came back to Soho. Um, um, but it was a number of years ago. But that song which you played at the beginning, "Don't Think About Tomorrow Tonight," was written on a night out in Soho. Um, and um, I went. My brother was based in New York actually, but he had come over to England for to do some shows. And we went out with a friend of mine, and he kept on moving on, and uh, he wouldn't he wouldn't stay in one place, and. Uh, <laughs> I was back in New York with my brother a month or two later, and we just start, I started jamming away playing that riff, and uh, and then he 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 put the lyrics down and off it went. So you know, well as I always say at this point, we'd like to have musicians. We do. Fate. <laughs> we do. Yes. And then, and then they look at us oh, and scans and go, "No, we're say, not coming." But we... when's the fate, Tim? Have we got the sting? Oh, oh hold on. <laughs> we got a sting. The Soho Village Fate, Sunday the sixteenth of July from midday at St Anne's Gardens. Okay. that's when the fate is um, so yeah you should definitely come and play that if that but where better to do the exhibition than Mark Fuller and Shireen Fuller's place um, full of music heritage at Karma Sanctum and um, I preceded you with a show about mountains and that's how we met um, the exhibition opened a few weeks ago and it's, br it's brilliant I went again two days ago took a friend to see it, it the photography in the book, I haven't had time to read the book yet, but there's some great pictures. Tell us a bit about the exhibition and how you've managed to hang it in the hotel. Yeah, yeah so I, I was looking for an art gallery initially, and then I got a friend of mine said, maybe you should go to a hotel, and I got in touch with, I was put in touch with Mark Fuller, and he got back to me within 15 minutes of seeing the photographs and said, this is absolutely brilliant, I love it. Um, so the Karma Sanctum is a rock and roll hotel, it's been there for about 15 years. Um, uh, it has a connection with Iron Maiden, um, they've had everyone's everyone's stayed there from like ZZ Top through to Chrissy Hind, um, and Mark puts on uh, you know art shows in this in the space, and so there was a you know a confluence of 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 interests, and we and he said yeah come and um, come and take over the space. So we we I I've put it's on three floors. I've got photo, thirty five photographs and about twenty pieces of art from the trip. Um, which was 20 years ago. So these things, that, the interesting thing about the photographs is that they they show an America in transition, an America going from uh, the, from analog through to digital. A lot of the places don't exist anymore. Um, and it, looking back 20 years later, they're all, all shot on 35 millimeter. I've blown them up um, large. And uh, yeah, it's just they have more pathos now. Um, but yeah, the, the, the photographs document this trip, which we took the book, the book is more the, the story of the nightlife, actually, to be honest, and the story of music than it is necessarily. It comes from the photographs, but at the same time, actually, it's a deep dive into the, the history of American popular music. Amazing. And the and book is available to buy at the hotel as yeah, well. Yeah, you can buy it at the hotel. You can buy it online at www.losingeldorado.com. Losing Eldorado. And you'll find all about, out about Rufus. Yeah, Rufus. So we, 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 the first night we bought the car, the first day we bought the car, I had to... Um, my brother was driving the rental car, and, and and we picked up this car for fifteen hundred US dollars, which back then was not a lot of money. It was like seven, eight hundred quid, and it was cheaper for us to buy a car than it was for us to rent a car. You can't drive out of state often with a rental car. And my brother was driving the rental car. He was four years older. I was eighteen. He was twenty-two, 
And we found this car in Chicopee, Massachusetts. And um, Jeremy was like, you know, we, we, we drove over there, had traveler's checks, we paid all the money, we, we went oh, massively over budget. And he, he was like, well, look, you know, you, you're going to have to drive the car back to Boston. And I've got to deliver the, the, uh, the, you know, the rental car back to Boston Airport. And it was 120 miles away, and I'd never driven anything bigger than a mini Mayfair. Yeah. So, you know, suddenly I was confronted with this, with his, this boat, and, uh, yeah, Jeremy basically gave me a very little... It was also an automatic, which it sounds like it shouldn't be that difficult if you've driven a manual, mm. but it is a bit strange. Very unfamiliar. Yeah, and a six-litre engine as and well. Everything's so, just bigger. The roads are bigger. Everything's, everything's wider. Everything's bigger, but bigger. It, it was within about 15 minutes of driving, I suddenly realised that this car was a dream to drive. Yeah, like bolts. I had a Ford Falcon when I drove in Australia. Like, yeah. And it had, like, a bench seat in the back it, and a stick shift. Absolutely. It's like a handbag, and you, once you were in drive, it just, and, and also you put your foot down, and then it'd be a few, there'd be a little pause, and then it would set off. That's exactly right. And then, but then once you, once you put your foot down, you get that little rush, and then suddenly yeah. the engine kicks in, and it's got huge amounts of power. Um, it was a beautiful car, and so we went, we got to Boston. We'd seen Alicia Keys the night before, actually, on her first US tour. And um, we got to Boston and we went out to a place called Wally's, which is a jazz club, which is, I think is still running. Um, it did close down a bit for the pandemic. Um, but Boston's famous because it's got a, a very good, very um, vibrant jazz scene because of Berkeley School of Music. And we were in the car with two girls and they said, what's the name of the car? And I instinctively replied, Rufus. Um, and I don't know why, because, you know, was it, was it coming from Rufus Thomas or was it uh, a reference to Bill and Ted? I don't know. So, um, you've got to have a name for a car. Traditionally, it should be a female name, in my view. But I think you're right. Traditionally, my called the little old lady. The little old lady. That's it. Yeah. Name. I'm, I'm you're concerned. reminding me a lot of what P.J. O'Rourke said about rental cars in his American things. He basically, there's a long discussion about what is the best kind of car. But at the end of the discussion, everybody goes, no, the best kind of car is a rental car. <laughs> <laughs> you can just trap it and not worry. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, we, as this wasn't super expensive, but we, you know, we did, we, you know. You, I think you got the equivalent of a rental we car. Did. We did, we did. But it was, it was a, it was a, yeah, pretty amazing but, experience. Um, it's such an amazing story, and we could talk for a whole hour about it. We, we're running out of time. I'm concerned about getting through all the important music because it's such a yeah. big part of it, the music. So, do you want to introduce the Chuck Berry track? Which yeah, so the next track is Maybelline by Chuck Berry, which is all about, well, it's actually all about a Cadillac versus a Ford. Um, and the connection with Soho, well, the connection with the animals, the animals were on tour with Chuck Berry mm -hmm. when they started playing House of the Rising Sun. And I think they might have heard him doing it. Um, and they needed a song which was a bit different to the stuff they were doing because they were kind of doing straight blues. And this, they heard this song and it was, you know, Bob Dylan was playing it. But apparently when Bob Dylan heard the animals version, he stopped playing. Right. Because he was like, they've just, they've done a bit, they've beaten it. So right. we'll, have a li we'll have a little bit of this. Uh, by Ch Back on the Soho Society Hour, chatting here with Mark and Tim. Um, so you're spending a bit more time back in Soho now. This encouraged you back in, putting on this show. Um, and what, where would you encourage like new musicians to come and get involved in? In, in, in Soho? Yeah. I mean, there's I'll, I'll, upstairs at Ronnie's is always good. Um, and then obviously there's places like Spice of Life. But, you know, it, it, it's difficult, is what I have to say. Um, it, and it's something which I've struggled with over the years. Like, I've been involved in the music industry for a long time. I was actually running a music publishing company in Soho um, for a long period of time. Yeah, if you, you can wear, see your old office from here. I can see my old office old. from here, yeah. Um, look, I think it's... A, actually, down in, down in you know, uh, places like um, Cafe Bohem, they have, they have people playing on, in the afternoon. Yeah, which is really great. good. Every yeah. day at 3 p.m. Yeah. There needs to be more music venues, though, and the venue needs to, needs to be nicer to the musicians. That's, well, there's that's... the George Hudson and the Boulevard for right. that period, yeah. and also he's yeah. opening he's a new open. venue on the other end of Broadwick Street, yeah. so, and he's still got the piano bar. So they are coming. They are coming. There's places. Archer Street's got quite. You know, it's got no people sing sing the singing waiters yeah, and that sort of stuff. And Archer yeah, yeah. Have a laugh. yeah, Archer Street is a great bar. It's easy to forget about. It's a brilliant bar. It's a really good basement. Also, where do you start? What about buskers? We don't have many of these buskers. I think buskers are brilliant. I think that people should. Uh, I always try and give buskers money. I mean, they're you know, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Oh, you yeah. certainly see a lot of that in America and New Orleans. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, Lots yeah. of street performers in New Orleans. I mean, the, I, I would love it if it was like Bourbon Street, you know, that here. You can, you can pop in and out of places in Bourbon Street and there's the whole street is just full of um, bars 
uh, with, with live music. Now, we, we should ask Ace Alesh to put a, a condition on all the licenses that yeah. they, they can only open a bar if it's got live music. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think live music is a really, a, a really important um, thing. It, it connects people, makes people happy. So, Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. I really encourage you to go see the show. There's so much amazing work at the hotel. You can also buy a book, 20 quid, a very good read. Tim's going to read this one. Yeah. Um, I've lent People my know copy what to win. Well, it's on Warwick Street, which Warwick runs Warwick. parallel to Regent Street, yeah. which is south of Beak Street, north of Brewer Street. Exactly. Yeah, and it's on till June, so um, it's We're, free to go around. So just go and just walk into the Karma Sanctum and say you're coming to see my show and coming to see Losing El Dorado. Losing El Dorado has also got its own website. We're going to end today's show with some Mark Cohn. Yeah, we're going to be walking in Memphis. Um, you don't do much walking in Memphis, to be honest, but um, when you do, this is the experience you get. And actually, the funny thing about the song is very much all the things which are mentioned in the song kind of happened to us. We did end up at uh, Grace Sand and Reverend Al Green's Gospel Church. Lovely. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Ace.